Today's video is sponsored by Owned.TV, which is a company that creates a lot of streaming assets to make your streams look professional, whether you are on Mixer, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. And the best part is it doesn't break the bank. So if you're wanting to have a complete overhaul design for your channel, take a look at the complete packages that they offer. Or if you're just looking for something like sub badges, emotes, transitions, overlays, panels, more of like individual things that you want to add to your channel, they got those things as well. So to see their full inventory, click on the link in the video description below and let me know if you get anything from owned. How's it going everyone? John here. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, be sure to go ahead and take a look at the other content on the channel. And if you're enjoying that content, be sure to go ahead and subscribe and follow me on my other networks, which you can find in the video description below. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create at least one scene on your actual stream setup for Twitch Studio. Now Twitch Studio is currently in beta, so you may or may not have it. And if you do have it, definitely go ahead and mess around with it based on the videos that I show here. And if you have any questions, you can always ask the developers or you can ask me inside the comment section below. I am not a developer, I am just someone giving you guys a little bit of a first look at it and everything and kind of showing you how to tinker with it. So what we're going to want to do is click on this right here and we're going to click on the plus. It's going to give us just saying regular layout and you can either right click and hit rename and just rename it whatever you want and then you can hit edit. So now you have this blank canvas. So just like I say inside of my Streamlabs OBS tutorials, the way I look at it is your layers is going to be everything that you put for your sources and then this is what you're going to see. So PowerPoint slide, sources, and then back here is going to be all of your PowerPoint slides. So PowerPoint slide, like blank slide, slides for PowerPoint, and then when you want to edit, this is going to be all of the information that goes into the slide. Hopefully that makes sense. So when you're ready to add stuff, click on the plus over where it shows layers. So now you have a bunch of different things here. You have screen share, you have the main screen share, text, image, media, solid color, color gradient, webcam, Twitch alerts, and then also embedded web pages. I'm not going to be going over all of these. These are very self-explanatory. What I am going to show you is how to bring in just what you need to to get started. So first things first, we need to bring in an image. So we're going to click on image and you're going to be able to name it. So we're going to say, let's say webcam. So now that I have that there, you got this box here. Now we have extra information over here. You can give it any type of size and position. You can unlock the aspect ratio or you can lock it. You can set it to fit or it can fill or it can stretch and that's going to mess with the size. But once you go ahead and find whatever one you want, you can have ones that are already been uploaded or you can upload them yourself. So if you have images here, you can go ahead and grab some from, from their own or if you've uploaded your others on here already, then you can go ahead and grab those. So we'll go to browse. Okay, so once you are into the file that has all the ones you're wanting to add in there, there's two things that you need to keep in mind. If you're wanting to use an animated overlay, do not use images. It will not work, it will not show. If you're wanting to use a static one that doesn't have animation, then you will use image. So we'll go ahead and we'll bring in one that is not that and we'll just go ahead and we'll just add in a webcam overlay that is just going to be static. So we have that in there. We'll click select and now we have our actual webcam. So what we can do is we can grab these little guys and we can drag it and make it larger. You can click anywhere inside the box to move it around. One thing that I do notice is if you get it too close it automatically snaps and sometimes it could be a little difficult to drag out but just just know that it will automatically snap like that so you can also mess with the border if you want to give it a border around you can do chroma key if you're going to be using a green screen you can also mess with the color filters 
So just remember you have a little bit of customization there. So now that we have the webcam, we'll just bring that right about here. I will not add a webcam for this video, but at least you'll have that there. So if we go back over to these, over on your layers, you have it where you can hide it or lock it. Once you have it in a position that you are enjoying, lock it. So now what we can do is we can add in alerts. So we can do two things. You can either do the Twitch alerts, which will just be your generic alerts, and they will pop you up like this. So if someone follows, you'll get something that will look like that. But if you want to use the ones that you already use for Streamlabs, then you're going to want to take the link from Streamlabs' website, and you're going to want to go down to Embedded Web Page. The Embedded Web Page is the equivalent to the browser source that you see on XSplit and OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. So you'll take that entire web link and you'll plug it in right here and then it will show the Streamlabs logo and then you'll be able to see the stream alert. So let me go ahead and grab that for us real quick. Okay, so here we go. So I'll paste that in. You'll see the little Streamlabs logo there. And the way to test the the alert and everything is you'll have to be over on Streamlabs' uh, um, website to do it. So then we'll go ahead and we'll hit test follow. And then there is the test follow to kind of show you like how that is and everything. So you can also do the same thing. You can resize it, move it where you want to, and then you can test it again. And if everything is looking good, then you can leave it as it is. Now, if you want to change like fonts and stuff like that, that all has to be done on Streamlabs' website. And then if you're wanting to add in a game or anything like that, then there's a few options too. So you can do main screen share. Now, if I do main screen share, you can see that I've already got one and it's just endless loop, right? Well, you can also change that. So you can go over here where it says entire screen and you have all these lists of different options. So you can change to whatever it is you need to change it to and then that will be there. If you want capture card, you can do capture cards. If you're gonna be doing video games and stuff like that with a capture card, you can do it with a multiple monitor. If you have multiple monitors, you can choose the actual game and everything like that too. And that will all display right here for you. So I'm gonna hide that so we don't see the trippiness that that brings. So we got alerts, we got webcams. Um, you can also bring in, now when I said media, this is going to be where I was telling you about the animated overlays. So for animated overlays, it's going to be a little different. So for animated overlays, we can do let's go with this one. So I got the same one, we'll put them side by side. And you'll be able to see that this one's got some type of movement to it versus that one. Now, that's what I was saying. Like, it has to be a media that you're bringing in because it's basically a media file. It's not necessarily a picture file. If you're wanting to bring in other medias as well, you can. So you have stuff like images, video, and sound. So if you have your own sounds that are already on there, if you have your own videos that are already on there, or if you want to grab any of their own images, you can. You just have to upload it basically onto that to be able to kind of cycle through them. And then you can have it be in loop. You can have it restart whenever you go into that scene. So that's pretty similar to how it is over on the other applications out there. And the menus and everything haven't really changed much on there. Now, if you're also wanting to add in your webcam, you just click on webcam and it should instantly pick it up. It will bring over the option for you to choose your webcam and you'll be able to then manipulate its size and everything like that too. Now for the text, text is a little different. 
So for the text tool, from my understanding, I don't see them having it to where you can bring in like stream labels. I don't have a, I, I couldn't figure that one out for myself. The, they don't have it to where it can read from a text file. So that was one of the things that I'm hoping that they do bring. So if you guys are using stream labels, that might be a deal breaker for you. If you're, if you're um, wanting to use this, but I don't see any option here about reading from a text file, but you can put text in here and then you can mess with the fonts. You can mess with its placements, opacities, and all that stuff. And, of course, you can always resize it and everything, too. So, there's definitely the options for, for that. And I think that's pretty much it for the most of the stuff that you're actually going to need in there. And then, when you get everything finished, you can go ahead and hit save. And then you'll see something like that. But then, once you're ready to have everything, then it will look something like this. So this is going to be just an animated starting soon screen. It's got your social plugins. And then these are just basic text tools. There's three different text tools. And I'll actually show you guys everything for the layout. So I have music, which I have currently muted. So as you can see, I have it muted. And that way it's got something playing in the background. I got it set for loop. I got my YouTube. I got my Instagram, my Twitter, and then the media, which is obviously going to be the animated screen. So that is pretty much how you bring everything together. It might seem intimidating at first. It might be a little confusing. It might take a little bit longer because it's a new application. Just give it a little bit of time. And if you do find bugs, please use this report bug button on the top right hand side let the developers know what you are having issues with that way they can go ahead and try to fix it but if you guys have any any questions about this if there's anything i miss anything that uh you guys know about that you want to share please let us all share the information in the comment section below and once more stuff comes out for it i can definitely kind of cover all of that but one thing i do want to say before I let you guys go, and that is going to be that this is definitely a work in progress. Give it a little bit of time, and you guys should be able to use this if you're having problems with Streamlabs OBS or if you're having problems with XSplit and everything like that. So we'll see where this goes. It's got potential. I'm looking forward to seeing the extra updates that they bring to it in the future. And maybe I'll cover them if there are some pretty drastic changes. But let's talk about it in the comments. I appreciate you guys. And be sure to go ahead and follow me over on my social media. Follow me over on Twitch and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the videos. I'll catch you guys next time.